welcome to the world of probiotic foods. This is Cultured Food Life with your host, Donna Schwenk. Hi, everybody. I am Donna, and I'm excited to be talking to you today about something that I really love. Um, it's about water, kefir soda, and uh, there's many different ways to make it. And I'm going to tell you all about them today on this show so we can find the method that's going to work the best for you. But before we do, I want to give you a little bit of introduction to about this and about uh, why it is, is something that I really love and add in my life and my family's life. And if you're, if you're new to this, this show, uh, let me welcome you and help you under have a whole new understanding of health and wellness. When I first started um, on this journey, I had to fight through some pretty bad days to earn some of the best days of my life, which is now. Um, and as I get older and I watch people around me decline, it just seems like I'm soaring um, because my body just knows how to keep me well now. It's an exciting time in my life when most people um, think that they're going to get sick or get old and they're going to have all kinds of problems and it really doesn't have to be that way. And uh, I hope that some of the things that I teach you on these shows will help you understand just how well your body's designed to heal you and to keep you well. And when you discover that, it is so exciting and so relieving because you stop being so afraid of getting sick all the time or catching the latest bug or virus or about major health problems. You start to understand how your body works, what it needs, um, how to keep it healthy and how it keeps you healthy. And it is, it just turns your whole life around. It's absolutely a wonderful way to live your life. And I hope that if you don't feel well, that you'll heed this and really take to heart that there's so many things that maybe you don't understand about how your body works and uh, to really start seeking that out and understanding and working with your body so that it can set you free and it can allow you to live a life that you feel so good that you want to do more and more things each and every day, even as you get older. Um, when I first was found these cultured foods that we talk about on these shows is it was really something I didn't understand. Um, I didn't understand why I felt so bad. I was pretty sick. And um, I didn't understand what was going on in my life that was making me sick. And everything that you eat, all the thoughts that you feel, everything you put into your body, um, if you believe that something you eat, that you're eating is bad for you, it's next to impossible to get a good result from that. And so all of these things that we do, lots of times we eat and drink foods that aren't good for us, even though we know they're bad for us. And why do we do that? Well, there's a good reason why we do it. And it's not just all, um, you know, addictions and cravings. It, there's science behind this. And when I was growing up, um, I, was, I grew up in Maryland and in Virginia. And my grandparents would come over for dinner a lot. And they knew that us grandkids were eating badly. And they really fussed at our mom and dad about it. But nobody really listened because these foods that we were eating as kids and even my, my parents, we were, they were so addictive in nature um, and everybody was doing it. So it wasn't like um, everybody thought it was bad because everybody was eating. It was, in the, it was in the 60s and 70s when I was growing up and, you know, all these new foods and new fast food chains were coming out. And everybody was eating them because they were fast and they were easy. TV dinners were a big thing. I remember TV dinners. I just loved those when I was a little kid. I thought they were the greatest things ever. And I remember SpaghettiOs in a can. And we started drinking pop with our, with our dinners and with our lunch. And I remember um, my grandparents got really upset about that. And they didn't like it because they knew it was bad for us. But everybody was doing it so... We didn't really know that much difference. We just thought they were old and fussing at us. And so the interesting thing is that my grandparents lived to be 90 and 94 years old. And they ate whole real foods every day. They never, ever drank soda pop. And they instinctively knew that all these new foods and drinks and bottles and, and cans and macaroni in a box, um, that weren't, they weren't healthy for us. They knew it. And I don't know why we didn't know it, but they knew it. 
Um, we were seduced by, you know, the flashy TV commercials and the sugars and chemicals and additives included in these foods made us crave them. So as a consequence, we developed a different species of bacteria in our guts that craved these foods and cried for more. Um, this is what your microbes do. Microbes do. They, depending on what you eat and what you drink, you will make microbes that crave these foods. And my grandparents never, ever developed these junk food craving microbes. So they resisted these foods with these and it wasn't even a problem for them. My grandma was a nurse and now I wish I could go back and talk to her. She's long since been gone, but I have memories of things she said and did. And I never really paid attention. It was just, you know, she was just being grandma. And now I feel sad about that because I never recognized the importance of what she was doing. And I dismissed many of the things she said. And boy, I had so much to learn. Sorry, Grandma. I wish I, wish I had listened. I wish I could have a conversation with her now. Because she knew. She knew it was bad and I didn't listen. And I thought she was just a silly old person and I was so, so wrong. Well, now I'm a silly old person. And God help me, wisdom has come to me from my own life experience and I wasted years not learning from my grandparents. And I've learned so much more. And I'm grateful for the struggles that we went through because it's brought me here. And it's taught me so much. And I remember over a decade ago, the day I got rid of all the diet sodas we were drinking in our house. It had affected me in so many ways. And um, if you want to hear some more about that, you might want to listen to my kombucha show. Uh, that was, it tells a story of how it was affecting me. I think it was called Kabucha Healed My Addiction. You might want to check that uh, podcast out. And I remember um, my little Holly, who was a little girl at the time, she taught me the biggest lesson about these, these diet sodas. We drank a lot of diet pop in our house, and this was many, many years ago. And I remember when Holly was a little girl, she drank a lot, and she would get pain and spasms in her legs, and we didn't know why. And one day she said to me, and she was little, she was probably six, seven, something like that. She said to me one day, every time I drink um, a diet soda, my legs hurt. And the lights went off in my head and I started researching and diet pop had aspartame in it, which is a neurotoxin that affects muscles and all manner of things such as eyesight. And shortly after that, I discovered that they had also made a new version of Diet Pop with Splenda. And later on, I found out that was even worse than aspartame because it kills 50% of the good bacteria in your gut. So that day was the day we drank our last diet soda. When I found all this out, I had enough of all of these diet drinks that were causing terrible cravings. We were really addicted to them. And uh, they were causing spasms in Holly's legs. And I started, my husband came home that day and I started throwing out all the diet soda and loading in the trash. And my <laughs> husband came home and he's like, wait, what is happening? And he called me Hurricane Donna that day as I made a very firm decision that no more would my family drink diet soda that was making us sick and killing our microbes. It wasn't happening. It was over. Um, killing the microbes was the worst because I had just discovered cultured foods and, um, I was killing 50% of it with what we were doing. So nothing kills my microbes and stays in my home. It was gone. It was thrown out and I never looked back. And I was like 16 years ago. Um, so then I started looking for replacements for the diet soda we drank because we liked the bubbliness. We craved that. And, um, we liked the fizz fizziness of it and it just tasted good and I saw I started looking for replacements. Kombucha is a bubbly beverage but we drank that a lot. We drank that the most often of all the drinks but then I found kefir soda and it's crazy good guys. It's so good. I have a bunch of different ways you can make it so it's going to be easy for you. You can pick the one that's easiest for you and I want to explain them to you and I want to explain more about kefir sodas probably more than other people do because um, I've had years of making these and drinking them and discovering what works, what doesn't, what's good about it, what's not good about it. And I, I'm always up front with you. I always want to be honest with you. And I'm going to tell you my experiences and my uh, things that I've learned about it. And hopefully that will help you to gain more insight. 
Okay, so water kefir. If you don't know what it is, it's another type of a non-dairy kefir that is really growing in popularity. And I have so many people start with water kefir first, which is uh, before they try anything else, because it's easy and it's fun. You can make it with juice or coconut water or fruit, fr uh, fresh fruit, or even an extract, which I've got a lot of recipes for. Uh, it's just really easy and it's fun. And there, you add a culture to it, and then you let it ferment, just like you do with milk kefir. The good bacteria in kefir eats out the sugars in the juice and creates probiotics. And so it's a naturally occurring carbonation that happens instead of forced carbonation, which you get in soda pop. Plus, it unlocks additional vitamins and many, many minerals that we so desperately need in our diet today. We really lack minerals in our diet. And I want to do a, a podcast about that because minerals are so important. They keep us so healthy and they're kind of taken for granted. But our soils get depleted of them and our bodies do. And we struggle because of it. It's hard on us. So it's a wonderful thing that water kefir has a lot of minerals in it. And um, there's two, I kind of call it water kefir and I also call it kefir soda. And the reason I do that is because those are the methods. There are different methods to make it. They're kind of the same drink. Um, but they're just made differently with different cultures. So if I refer back to them, that's why I call one water kefir and one kefir soda. And I'll explain more about that further on in this podcast. Um, in addition to the probiotics that are in kefir soda and the fact that it eats a lot of the sugar, meaning you don't have to deal with the adverse effects of sugar that soda pop often gives you like blood sugar fluctuations and cravings. Kefir does create that naturally occurring carbonation and no chemicals or artificial ingredients and it's just bubbly and delicious and it helps you to get off of those sodas that aren't good for you. Okay, now while I stand by these great replacements for soda, for store-bought soda pops, like these are good replacements for them, I want to let you know that um, of all of the different cultured foods there are, and there's a lot of them, there's cultured vegetables and kombucha and, um, well, we've got so many, well, it would take a whole show, but there's a lot of them. Um, I want to shoot straight with you and tell you that in water kefir, there are only 10 good bacterias versus over 50 in homemade milk kefir or non-dairy milk kefir. Um, it, and it does not have the high amounts of calcium and magnesium found in those milk kefirs. And so for people who have problems with candida or diabetes, there's often too much sugar in these sodas if you don't ferment them properly. If you ferment them properly, they do really well. But if you've got problems with diabetes and candida, I highly recommend that you either try coconut milk kefir or regular kefir, uh, dairy kefir with goat milk or regular milk or almond milk. Those are better for you if you have already have problems with your blood sugars and candida. Because in the beginning, people sometimes don't ferment them long enough to remove the sugars. And so you want to be careful about that. And so in the beginning, if you start out with the other ones, they not only help you with your um, by killing candida, many of them, when you have a lot of probiotics in your gut, candida moves over to the corner and takes its rightful place and doesn't dominate. And especially coconut kefir is wonderful for that because coconut has a um, caprylic acid in it, which is a candida killer. And though for those with diabetes, you want to, um, you really want to try the other milk kefirs or non-dairy milk kefirs because they're very, very good for diabetes. They help reduce inflammation. Um, for me, it was just a godsend because it got rid of my diabetes and I've seen it help so many people. Now I have not seen that as much with water kefir. So that's why I want to tell you, and I believe it's because there's not as many good bacteria in it and because people don't ferment it properly. So that's my take on it. Now, the other thing I want to warn you about is that water kefir can be a little explosive and your bottles could shatter and burst if you don't release the pressure on them often and you don't check them often and you don't use thick bottles made for brewing. You need to make sure you don't use those ones from the craft store. So you want to make sure you get really thick bottles for brewing and you want to check them often to make sure that they're not under too much pressure. Okay, so have I sufficiently scared you now? So this was a show about water kefir and I've scared you. But I want to tell you the truth too. I want to tell you what I've experienced and the benefits that I've got. Because honestly, guys, I want you to get better. If you don't get better, you don't make the world better. 
You don't help your brothers and sisters because you don't feel good. And when you don't feel good, you can't do anything. So I want to do the best thing for you. So I'm going to tell you my experience. I really, really love water kefir, but I also um, don't want to recommend, a lot of people recommend things. There's a lot of people out there telling you how to make all these foods and they have not done it for 16 years or experienced some of the things that I've experienced. And I have a lot of um, just life experience with all of these foods because I've been doing it for so long. And I really love them a lot. And I, the benefits are huge, guys. They're just massively huge when you add probiotic foods to your life. But um, I want you to pick the one that's going to work the best for you. Okay, so let's get into the ways you can make kefir, water kefir or kefir soda. Okay, so you can make it three different ways. You can use kefir whey. And kefir whey is when you take the milk solids off of your kefir and you drain them like you would drain off to make cheese, like uh, even with yogurt, they do that, but it's not as strong enough to make kefir soda. But when you're making kefir cheese, you drain off the whey, the clear liquid part. And you can use that to make kefir soda. There's also a kefir powder that works really, really well that will make you, like one package will make you like 60 bottles because you can use part from the first bottle to make another bottle. That works fantastic, so that's super easy. And then there's water kefir crystals, which is what I call water kefir. And they're little, clear, translucent little crystals, different from milk kefir grains. They look different. They're tinier. They're clear. They're, they multiply and grow like crazy. Um, but they're wonderful because you'll have them forever if you take care of them. Right now, I probably have like, oh my goodness, I, gallons of water kefir crystals. And they, they're wonderfully easy to take care of. They're less fussy than milk kefir crystals, milk kefir grains, excuse me. I call these crystals and I call milk kefir grains, even though they're not grains, but that's just what people call them. But um, these water kefir crystals, basically you're just adding the culture in, letting it ferment, taking it out, and then second fermenting it, making it a delicious soda from it. And it's really easy too. Um, my preferred way of making kefir sodas I like, oh, well, I, I like kefir whey. I like the powder. I, I switch all the time. I think, oh, this is my favorite way. And then I start doing it the other way. And then I like that way better. So I don't really have a preferred method because I'm constantly switching it up and trying the next one. So any of these are going to be um, really whatever you have. If you have milk kefir, try it with your whey. Try making some kefir cheese with your kefir using the whey to make soda and you're going to love it. You've already got the, the culture there. So why not try it? Water kefir crystals are fantastic because you, they're just, they're just so easy to use and they multiply and grow and you'll have a lot to give away to your friends. Plus they're kind of good for you. You can even eat them and they're kind of soft and little. So they don't, uh, they're not big like, um, milk kefir grains. Um, if you're going to do the, the kefir whey method, let, let me explain how you do it. So you're going to use a half a cup of fresh kefir whey. And what that means is, okay, so let's say you've made some kefir, milk kefir. You strain out that milk kefir. You put, that, um, you put a strainer in a bowl and you put a coffee filter in the strainer. And I have all this on my website, guys. And you put the milk kefir in the strainer that has a coffee filter in it. And you cover it with some plastic wrap or whatever, stick it in your fridge. And the next day you have a whole bunch of kefir whey in the bottom of the bowl. That's how you do it. And you're gonna have a lot. So you need to use that to make your kefir soda. And you'll need like a half a cup of it and it needs to be fresh. You need to use it within a day or two of straining because it starts to lose its power to culture after a few days. So you're gonna put a half a cup of kefir whey into a 16 ounce bottle. And then after mixing that with um, some fruit juice, You'll use like a half a cup of fruit juice and then you're going to fill, fill the rest up with water and you're going to put your lid on it and you're going to let it sit on your counter and you're going to watch it. And it can take anywhere from three days to five days, depends on um, how fresh your kefir whey is and how strong it is. And then once it gets bubbly and you'll see that, it's you can put it in your fridge and it'll last a really long time. Um, but it's best to drink that right away within a couple weeks because it kind of starts to get really tart tasting. But that's how you make it with Kiva Way. I have all this on my website too. And I have all this on my Biotic Pro membership site. I have videos on how to do this if you want to become a Biotic Pro. 
it's we've got like 50 plus videos we keep adding stuff every month lots and lots of stuff on there for members um but i also have it free on my website if you want to, and it's in my new book culture food in a jar we've got recipes for that too and um there's i've got it everywhere okay so the next method is water key for crystals the little crystals you you get the cr crystal cultures which i sell them and you can get them other places too and uh you will just put them in a jar. You use a jar. Um, they work really, really well. If you just, let's see, you have you, know, you get about four tablespoons of water key for crystals when you buy them. And so what you want to do is you put four tablespoons of water key for crystals in a jar, and then you're going to add some kind of sugar to it. Um, and it's going to eat the sugar. Remember, the sugar's not for you. It's for the culture. And you're going to put uh, four cups of water in there and four tablespoons of sugar. You're going to put the exact amount of uh, tablespoons that you have of your key, key for crystals. So if you have four tablespoons of key for crystals, then you're going to use four tablespoons of sugar. And you can use turbinado. You could use raw sugar. You can use any of, any of those natural sugars too. And the, they will be eaten out by the culture. And then once it's, pro it'll take about one to two days, you put a, a lid on it, which is a cloth and rubber band for this one. And you let it uh, culture on your counter at room temperature for two days. And you'll see it get kind of bubbly and moving around and doing stuff. And you want to taste it. And, and when it's not sweet anymore, um, you can drink it and put some fresh lime or lemon in it. Or you can second ferment it and add fruit flavors to it. And it's so good. Um, I just posted one on my Facebook page, I think, a few days ago, the Grape Keeper Soda. And you can go to my website and see recipes. But I have a lot of recipes on how to flavor them. And it is so easy and delicious. And when you second ferment it, um, you just give it a little bit of juice or some fruit and you let it sit again for a day and it gets fruit flavoring and delicious and the sugars get eaten up and it's, you'll love it. It's delicious. Okay, the third method is the powder method. And this is, a, this is what I call water kefir for dummies. It's so easy. And I, of course, this is the one that I used for years myself because I used to struggle trying to figure everything out because I, you have to remember when I started doing this, nobody was really doing it. So I had to kind of like do all this trial and error to figure out how to do things because I didn't have anybody to ask. I didn't have anybody to go to. And when I did go and find people, a lot of times they didn't really know. So they would act like they knew and they would tell me stuff and then it wouldn't work. And I didn't know why. So basically, I had to figure it all out all by myself. So this is after years of experience, but this is how I originally made kefir soda. And we sell these special kefir powder packages. And what you do is you uh, get a 16-ounce bottle, and you'll use the package in the bottle, and you'll put half of it as water and half of it as juice. Whatever kind of juice you want to use, you can buy it from the store. It could be frozen juice that you've thawed. It can be fresh from your juicer and you let it sit on your counter for two to three days and you check it because it gets really bubbly and once it's bubbly you put it in your refrigerator and you drink it it's great but then it's really cool you can take um, a fourth of a cup of this bottle and make another bottle and add half water half juice and then you can do it again I mean I think I did it 60 times and then I quit making it, not because it quit working, but because I just got lazy and forgot about it. So it just keeps going and going and going. So it's really an affordable way to do it, but it's also a fun way and an easy way. That's why I call Kefir for Dummies because I kind of needed that. So um, you want to make sure your bottles are securely fastened. I use the flip top bottles, um, but you can use some um, old kombucha bottles like GT's got great bottles for water. Key they work great for water kefir. If you, so it's a good way to recycle those and use those. And um, this, when you make another bottle of this from your first batch, it's going to ferment in less than a day. And so it, for, it gets really strong. So it just ferments it like I've had it done in eight hours and it doesn't take very long. And so it, it's really it's fun because you can change it up. You can change your flavor. Your kids can make it. You can always have a different flavor going and it makes it so quick and easy and it's not a lot of work and it's, it's a fun way to make kefir soda. All of these are really fun to make. Um, I mean, we have lots of probiotic drinks, uh, drinks like ginger, uh, ginger beer, or ginger, uh, soda is so good guys. If you haven't seen that, that's on my website. We have Rejuvelac, which I love. 
which is that needs to be a whole other show. Um, but we have kombucha. We have lots of different alternative sodas that you can drink. And I, I encourage you to try to make kefir soda and come hang out with me if it feels new and you don't understand it. Because, guys, it's really not hard. I promise you it's not hard. It's just new to you. So if you come hang out with me, I'll encourage you. I'll give you help and instructions, show you how to do these things that are really, really easy. And you'll, you'll just you'll be surprised how fun it is to make them. And I really hope to make these probiotic sodas mainstream. You know, I see so many kids have so many health problems nowadays, and I really think a lot of it comes from all the pop they drink. It's so hard on your immune system. It's so hard on your body. And fructose corn syrup is not a good thing. And I'm hoping that these sodas will help replace that. They'll give them the bubbliness. And they're not as sweet, but you're, you, would, you adapt to that. Your body doesn't crave that unless you're feeding it that all the time. And if people will reach for them um, to give them something delicious to help build their microbiome, uh, to help their immune system, to help their bodies um, feed those little unseen organisms that live in us by the hundred trillions, it can make such a difference. So many people nowadays um, are, are waking up to the fact that these sodas aren't good for us, these regular ones made with fructose corn syrup there. The beverage companies are struggling. Their sales are going down and declining because people are really starting to become aware of how hard it is on their bodies. You know, um, there's a lot of research and, and things they're saying now. And when you flood your body with something like um, fructose corn syrup day after day and drink it several times a day or drink it all day long, takes a toll on you. It took a toll on me. And I, and I was drinking Diapop, which was just about as worse. Um, that was, it was just as bad as what I was regular pop because it really, uh, wreaked havoc on me in many ways and my family. So when I found these sodas and water kefir, it was just, it was a godsend. It's awesome. And it's fun. Um, and we can get back to making our own stuff. It's, and, and it not be hard. It can make such a difference in our lives, and especially the lives of our children that are coming up that are so sick. They need your help, too. And so even if you just make this one change, um, you'll find out how easy it is to make cultured foods. Kids will like it. Your family will like it. You'll have fun making it. And we can get back to um, being a part of the food that we eat, not just buying it all the time, but making it. So I hope that you'll check out my website at culturedfoodlife.com. And you can click the recipe section or you can click the water kefir section and you can see all the, and you have a kefir soda section too. <laughs> I have a bunch of them. Pick the one that most interests you and uh, check it out. See if it's something that you think you want to do um, and change your microbes one day at a time, one meal at a time, one drink at a time. Thanks for listening, guys, and you have a wonderful week.